2002 Ford Taurus with a misfire fault. And I wanna use this opportunity to show you guys some quick tests to isolate what is causing this cylinder number one PO301 misfire. Not that I really need to show this part, but this is our mode six data for misfires. And you can see that cylinder number one up here, this value of 1551, it has the most misfires. See a little bit on cylinder number six here too, but it's a way to look at misfire counters on Ford's mode six. So definitely cylinder number one. History of the vehicle is it just had plugs and wires put on it and the misfire is not felt all the time pretty much under load is when it starts to misfire. The direction I'm picking for this Ford is I'm gonna attack the ignition system first. And the reason I'm doing that is just simply because these coils are known for failure. And I've shown actually in another video, a cylinder drop test where you can have one half of the coil not firing. So I'm gonna go after ignition. Again, plugs and wires were just replaced. We could start low tech, we can start high tech, doesn't really matter. I think what I wanna do is show you guys a new scope that I just got. And I think it'll fill a void for some of you. Some of you guys have been asking me for an inexpensive alternative to some of the scopes that I've been using. And uh, here it is. It's called a U-scope. And it is made by AES Wave. And I'm gonna show you this scope in action on this ignition system. What I'm gonna show you is some single cylinder secondary ignition waveforms. And you can see I have my capacitive pickup hooked up to a plug wire. And I'm gonna run down the line. And one we wanna really pay attention to is cylinder number one, which is this one right here. You see how small this thing is? Just a little handheld guy. On off switch on the side. Wish I had my tripod here, guys. Sorry, I'm gonna kinda of do this one handed. See real fast boot up and it's ready to go. My scales are set from previously, I believe. Either way, I'm gonna start the car and we'll adjust them and take some pictures. Okay, this is initial view. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna change my time base and my scales a little bit here. There's your ignition firing event on that cylinder. This yellow line that's on the screen is our trigger level. And that's gonna help to stabilize this picture depending on the level you pick. What I'm gonna do is some snap throttle tests. So I'm gonna raise my trigger a little bit and I'm gonna let you guys watch this while I'm snapping the throttle. This will be a known good cylinder. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go to another one. Just gonna go to the back three here. Pay attention to uh, our spark line and our firing lines. That looks pretty good. We're going to cylinder one now. So all I'm doing is just moving my capacitive lead down the line here. Here's your cylinder one. And I saw what I wanted to see. Saw that spark line pretty much disappear. And a little neat trick to this scope, if I wanna catch that event, what I'm gonna do first, is I'm gonna raise my trigger level up to a level where we were on the snap. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to a single shot. What that's gonna do when it crosses that trigger is it'll hold that picture on the screen. You can hear the little cam sensor chirp on this engine too. We're gonna need a distributor for sure. And it just caught that here before I got to rev it. Let's try that again. And there is your event right there. 
No question about it, we have a secondary ignition problem as noted by the spark line hash that's in here. And that is a pretty cool capture. Very easy to do. Nice little inexpensive alternative to some of the stuff I've been using. So I like it. Definitely an advantage to be able to use something like this. I have adapters that we can use it on coilover plug too. And that is a uh, that is a real good looking shot. We can play around with the time bases a, a little bit to give you more detail. Let me show you another one. We'll leave it on single. And I'll go drop my time base a little bit. And we'll snap it again. That was actually a good one. Reset it, snap it again. Actually looked pretty good on that one too. That would be what a good snap would look like. This is an intermittent miss. There it is. So that's a really cool shot. You saw what a good one looked like on a snap. You saw what the bad one looks like. Now what we need to do is see if we have a plug, a wire, or a coil problem. Plugs and wires were just replaced. So just by that, we probably got a coil issue. I'm gonna show you one other simple test you can do to confirm that. Again, sorry about the squeaking in the video here. That's that cam sensor, synchronizer, distributor shaft is worn. I have a video on troubleshooting these. You guys will have to check that out. Being I'm one-handed here, this low-tech test I'm gonna show you, I kinda have to uh, not show you the way I want to. I, I just have one hand to work with. So what I've done, again, we're worried about this guy, this number one. Its companion cylinder is this one, which I believe is number five. And what I want to show you is just the distance that this spark's going to jump out of this coil. And this is the number five. You see that's jumping out past the plastic housing. Pretty good distance. That's at least an inch gap. And what I'm going to do is pause this for a second. I'm going to show you what this number one looks like. Okay, I didn't mention it in the last clip, but my test light's just simply going to ground. I'm not using an LED type test light. You will burn out an LED test light with this kind of test. I'm just using a test light going to ground because it's a good ground and it gives a spark somewhere to go. So what we want to do is watch the gap on this one. This is my number one. And you see that it's weak and will not jump that gap. And so these will fail all together and you'll have no spark at all out of one tower. And yes, it is possible for that to happen. Basically, the spark is finding a path through the coil housing itself. This is common on Fords. You see it's not jumping that same gap. And that would explain why it doesn't misfire really at idle. And misfires under load is we have a weak spark on the number one cylinder. So that's confirmed. This thing needs a coil replaced. So I hope you guys like that. Showing a basic test on a Ford cylinder drop using a test light and showing off my new little toy here. This little U-scope from AES Wave. I'm sure you guys are gonna have questions on cost and all that stuff. I'm not here to sell you a tool. Just showing off a neat little toy that just a lot of you guys have been asking me about a lower cost alternative. And uh, yeah, this is it. So check it out. Thanks a lot.